Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right there, right, right there, right here, is Nikki Kinzer. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Hi, Nikki Kinzer. How are you? Can I just? I'm I'm so good. Can I tell you why? Tell me. I spent the weekend at the XOXO Festival. Are you familiar with this? I have no idea. Hmm. XOXO. XOXO Festival Kiss is and hugs. a... Kiss and hugs. <laughs> Kiss and hugs. Kiss and hugs. This was the sixth annual XOXO Festival in Portland, Oregon. It's put on by uh, Andy Bio and Andy McMillan, who are two uh, gracious gentlemen named Andy. And uh, they're fantastic. And they put on a conference that is I seriously like no other conference that I have ever attended. Uh, this is the second time I a- attended this particular conference. And it is it was at the Memorial Coliseum. Uh, usually it's at this old sort of burnout old uh, factory. And it's kind of a very cool environment. But this year it was at it was at the big giant Coliseum. And there's 2300 people there. And uh, it was just really beautiful uh just a beautiful experience about creativity and work and the challenges of working on the internet and oh, interesting. Uh, inclusivity and uh, awareness and uh, it was it was uh, the spirit of xoxo embodies everything that i think we try to do on this show about uh, changing the the way we think about um adhd as something that we live with as a partner in our lives mm-hmm. and um it, it's it it was just a really magical Kind of a thing. They even gave me these pins. I'm u- I'm new to these kinds of pins, uh, and it's they're pronoun pins. You know about these pronoun pins? No. You you say when you register, you say you know I use the pronouns he him, uh, but they also had she her and they and they them and oh, cool. uh, ask me was one of them, ah. uh, and uh, it was it was you know it was very cool. They were really trying to normalize this kind of inclusive behavior that is not done anywhere else, right? And, right. and so it was just massive, massive congratulations uh, to the Andes and their incredible conference xoxofest.com check it out it's totally worth it i had an uh, experience similar tell me i went to the jason Mraz concert on friday night <laughs> <laughs> and he is all about love and inclusiveness and mindfulness so jason Mraz was monday or was was friday night friday night and where was this on was my this, birthday. Is in eugene no it was at the mcminnville uh, or not McMinnville, um, Troutdale Edgefield Amphitheater. Oh, at the McMinimums. At McMinimums. That is a fantastic facility. Yes. It was awesome. Oh, he's, he's delightful. Yes. And I had a new drink that I'd never had before. Oh, excellent. What was it? Do share. A Moscow Muller? Mule. 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 A Moscow Mule. Me. A Moscow, a Moscow Muller. I couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very different drink. Very different thing. Yeah. A- actually, and it wasn't the recipe in a is copper. A it, unfortunately, because my friend was like, well, usually they serve it in like a copper, you know, they do. Uh, yeah. cup. And I just got a little plastic white cup. Ma- makes you feel like Trotsky. Yeah. Yeah. But it was good. Moscow Mule. Ginger beer. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking I like it. Yeah. <laughs> move move into that world yeah yeah so but no it was a lot of fun we it was oh. great great concert great show if you're a jason moraz fan and and, uh, and as we know we i am you are a jason and my moraz friends fan. are yeah. and uh we danced and it was awesome That's so beautiful. yeah beautiful experience yes it was good memories we are uh, we're talking about ADHD today on the show. Yes, that, well, yes, that, that we're not talking about to, music uh, or <laughs> should come as a surprise to no one. Uh, we are talking about ADHD and we're talking about what do you do uh, when uh, when you don't feel supported yeah. in, in your diagnosis. And this is inspired uh, inspired by you, good people. Yeah. Yes, our listeners. Yeah, it, it came I through a that. couple different ways. Mm-hmm. I love that. We're going to talk all about that. Before we get into it, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You can get to know us a little bit better. Listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe for free to our mailing list and you'll get an email every time a new episode is released. You can connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD. And, you know, if you've ever been touched by anything that we've done on this show in the last many years, we'd sure appreciate it if you would consider supporting us with a few dollars at Patreon.com slash The ADHD Podcast. Your direct support via Patreon allows us to continue to grow the show, to invest in hosting and equipment, 
and to continue to develop resources that we use to invest back into the ADHD community. Plus, your support gets you access to the community Discord chat channels where you can interact with others living with ADHD and talk about a very wide range of topics. Maybe it's accommodations, maybe it's meds, maybe it's planning a new podcast on foods that float in milk. Uh, it is amazing, Captain and Crunch. I am <laughs> deeply gratified at that community every day I log in. In fact, I haven't logged in at all over the last four days, and I have missed so much. I've missed diagrams on how birds breathe oh, uh, that I caught this morning. I mean, the, the, uh, it's, this is amazing, and uh, I'm how just funny. so gracious or grateful that these uh, these folks are there. So join it. Join the group uh, and, uh, you know. See what's going on. See how how this wonderful community can help support you and your ADHD. Uh, that's uh, that's what we've got. Okay, Nikki. Yes. I just don't believe your diagnosis. Oh, how dare you, Pete Wright? <laughs> Actually, I, I should be saying that to you. Pete, I yeah, don't believe right. that you have ADHD. Yeah, right. Well, if I had a white glove, I would slap your face. With. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as we said earlier, this came through a um, couple different ways. Uh, the first question that came through is, what do you do when you have a family member or members who don't believe your diagnosis? Uh, and then the second question came, what if kids don't have the support they need from their parents or an adult that doesn't have support from their friends or spouse? Some challenges you have personal control over, but what about the ones that involve others' support? Oh, Oh, dear. Have you experienced this? Was, this? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I've told this story on the show. When I was diagnosed as an adult um, and told my own mother, she was highly dubious, mm. highly dubious. And it comes from like I totally recognize her position, too, that, uh, you know, a, 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 you know, I would feel terrible if suddenly 30 years later I find out that I missed something that, you know, in hindsight is potentially so obvious mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. like that that would feel terrible as a parent and i totally get that it took a lot of kind of normalizing to get to the other side of that it's interesting interesting you bring that up because um when i was looking into the topic and I'll, i i i base some of the information that i'm going to talk about today off of this article that i came across which was from rick green if you have not checked out rick green he's fabulous i put uh, the link in the show notes yes uh totally add is his website they have different documentaries about adhd in fact he i watched his um documentary on PBS when I was trying to decide if I wanted to go into ADHD coaching. It just happened to be on. This is the universe speaking. It just happened to be on one night. I think it was called ADD and loving it. And I was thinking, gosh, should I go this route? And I watched the documentary and sure enough, I was like, that's it. I'm doing it. The answer is yes. Yes. And I had the privilege of meeting him at a chat conference and I actually told him that story. So oh, <laughs> I was that's like, awesome. you inspired me. Um, but anyway, in his blog he has a article specifically it says i don't believe in adhd and going back to what you were saying about your mother one of the things that he says in the article is that that is what happens sometimes with parents is that they feel right. that guilt they didn't catch it that they didn't see it and um you know i can see that as a parent feeling like not that i don't believe that you wouldn't have it it's just that oh my gosh what did i what a bad parent i am for not seeing yeah. it and That's and right. not helping you sooner right so there's a lot of That's guilt exactly that, it. that gets in there but Anyway, so I want to go off a little bit off of this article because it was great. Um, and then we can talk a little bit about, you know, our perspectives too. Um, he sets up this great story, um, in the article about how you finally get diagnosed. You have this better understanding of who you are. You're going to start, or you are starting to implement some ADHD strategies, some systems. You're feeling really good, right? You're feeling like I've got this. I, I'm going to be able to conquer this. And I think from my experience, and that's why I'm not surprised when I asked you, has this happened to you? I think it happens to most ADDers and it happens to coaches. When I tell people what I do for a living, people don't believe you're an ADHD coach. They don't, they don't understand <laughs> it. They don't understand it, especially when I say that I coach adults and college students. Yes. They get the college students, but they don't understand the adults. 
Yeah. And they're like, because what? they Because they see it as a kid's thing. They it's, do. It, that is, we have, you know, five decades of seeing ADHD as a thing that you grow out of. Right. right? That complete misnomer, obviously, for those of us living with it. But but it is seen as a thing that you escape. Yes. You know, you yes. get through puberty and suddenly, oh, yeah, well, that was, you don't need to worry about that anymore. Or it's all boys. It's always boys that have oh, that hyperactivity. Yeah. Right. You know, girls don't have it. What are you talking about? No. Um, so definitely, you know, I think that most people listening to this is going to relate. It's either from a friend, a family member, a coworker. Um, they say they either don't believe in ADHD. Um, I had a, a trainer um, who I worked with who thought it was a pharmaceutical scam. Well, he is no longer my trainer because uh, <laughs> uh. I'm like, OK, you're you. Yeah, I'm not even going to say yeah. the words that I was thinking in my head. Um, there might be some people saying that there's nothing wrong with you, or this is what I got when I was telling somebody about what I did. Well, they're a grown adult. How can you just suddenly have ADHD? Oh, dear. How can, oh, how can that happen? Oh, yeah. That's... So, you know. Well, and I, you know, I get, I try to, I'm, I try to approach that with a sense of grace, right? Like, yeah. I, I mean, I, I get it. If you are living under the misconception that ADHD is a kid's disease, that ADHD can be contracted, you know, what right? I mean? that it can, it can develop. Like, you don't understand how that, how that can make sense. I get works. that, and I, my hope is that it's just a matter of education. Yes, I think so. Yeah. I think it is important to, to understand why you may react the way that you do. So when somebody does say that to you, you kind of feel like, you know, you've been slapped in the face a little bit, right? There's this right. like pit in your stomach, like, shoot, now I have to be, I have to defend this. I have to defend my ADHD or I have to somehow make them feel better about it or um, somehow maybe say nothing but then you start doubting yourself. Maybe they're right. Maybe I don't have this. I mean, there's a lot of different things that can kind of go into your mind when you hear these kinds of comments. And the reality is not everyone does believe in ADHD. We can't change that. Not everybody is going, I mean, there are going to still be people who are going to think that you don't have ADHD. Even if they believe in ADHD, they may not think you have it. Mm -hmm. um, so can we convince them that ADHD is real? Probably not. Um, I don't think it's, you know, necessarily an argument you want to spend a whole lot of energy on. But what Rick Green says, which I think is really good, is we can arm ourselves and be prepared when it happens. And so what he says is in the article, he spent years passionately arguing and debating with people whether, you know, what the facts were and, and he actually found a better solution. And I thought this was really good. He says he agrees with them. Sort of. Well, I need to hear more about that. He sort of agrees with them. So instead of being defensive, what he says is no matter what they say, he replies, you know what? That's exactly what I thought, followed by, then I learned. Mm -hmm. So I like this approach. <laughs> that's a that's a sales trick. It you know, is. Have you ever heard of feel, felt, found? I haven't. This is, but... a, this is a great sales trick. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I know how you feel. Right. I felt the same way. I didn't believe it either. And then I, I learned found... this. Yeah. And right. then I experienced this. And then I found out that other people were experienced this. And then I saw all the yeah. science behind it. I mean, you could go on and on. And so what I like about his approach is that it is hoping that we're educating people. It is hoping that maybe we're opening up that that door a little bit without having to get into some huge heated debate that's just going to make you mad and at the per you know get mad at the person too. But this is you know I I think that we still have to okay that's a great backup plan but what if mm -hmm. that still doesn't work right? I this is my own personal coaching opinion and Pete you can tell me what you think. I feel like at that point, you know your truth, you know how ADHD affects you. And I think that the, 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 you know, my feeling is the best thing is to let go of what that person thinks and just understand it's their issue and not yours. People fear what they don't understand, especially the closer they are to you. Yeah. So, and I experienced that. A little bit this weekend when I was open about my depression and anxiety, um, I could see my friends when I talked about it. They just oh, kind of shocked. They just looked at me like, are you okay? Yeah. What do you mean you're depressed? And I also got the question about medication. 
Well, why are yeah. you on medication? Does that make you feel worse? Does that make you feel numb? No, I feel like I have to have my medication or I'm going to go in a dark hole. Yeah. So, I mean, I really do think that people fear what they don't understand or, or you know, they just have never experienced it. So, and I don't well, fault true. those people at all. I mean, no, these are like my best friends. I mean, I love them, you know. <laughs> right. Well, and I mean, especially these people who, like you said, they're if they're that close to you. That sort of a that sort of a dis- discussion is a surprise, right? It it's is. A, it's the same surprise when it, when it's somebody close. We're at that age now, where the people that we've been closest to all our lives sometimes call us with surprises, right. like "I'm getting a divorce" or yeah. "I'm an alcoholic" or uh, right. I mean, these are the things that we start to hit at right now. Yeah. Like, I look at my beard and I think, God, I look know. at all that. We're gray. middle age. Yeah, that's that's where I am. And and how do you embrace that <laughs> right. comes back to something you just said, right? Embracing your truth. And I feel like what comes with this gray gray is a certain lack of patience in the debate. There are people for whom even people who have ADHD and feel very strongly that it is their job as a to be an acolyte of the case of ADHD, that ADHD mm-hmm. does exist, that they need to fight for it. And I appreciate those people and I am not one of them. Right. In order for me to make it through the day, I have a certain number of accommodations and practices and behaviors that I have had to aco- to to develop over the years. It is not anyone else's job but my own mm-hmm. to maintain those. And I don't have patience for it. And mm-hmm. so I shut up. Mm-hmm. I just shut up. And that uh, allows me to go on with my with my day and my life and and feel good and and I don't need to engage with people who adore fighting on the internet right you know in defense of ADHD and those who don't I I think it is harder when you talk about this case of your friends and your family you know Mm -hmm. my mother your friends yeah these people who have a vested interest in not believing that you're in trouble yes yes I agree and you know I had actually replied to the first question on a Facebook live and I took this question to one of my coaching groups and I have said, you know, what do you guys do when um, somebody doesn't believe it or somebody close to you doesn't believe it? And they all had the same answer. They, they actually, it, it kind of ruined the relationship um, for yeah. them. Now this was just a couple of, you know, ha- handful of people. What I think is, Everybody's going to be different. Every situation is going to be different. But I definitely would say avoid talking to that person about your ADHD. You know, um, yeah. you can savor the the relationship, but I would definitely say don't talk about that. Don't make that be an issue because especially if it's leading into fighting and negative feelings about the person and you've got to protect yourself, you know, and I think that's what you're doing. And what you're saying is I'm protecting myself by avoiding the conversation in the first place. I'm not going to engage in this. And, um, you know, I think that we can continue trying to educate our parents and our loved ones and our spouses, especially a spouse. I think it's important that we keep the the open communication. But see, that's the complication, right? That is the complication about having this conversation with people that you that are so close to you that yes. you have to have it. Well, right, because my first instinct is if it's a distant relative or somebody that's not really close, you could avoid it. But if it's somebody in your family, like if it's your husband or your wife or your partner or whatever, boyfriend, girlfriend, you can't avoid it. You have to talk about it. Right. Well, I I really like that strategy that you pull out for uh, the the feel, felt, found, right? Yeah. You know, the three F's. I think that is something that really allows you to dig into the conversation in a little bit more of a gentle way. Yeah. And just, it, yeah. You know, for the people that are most, you know, I, I know how you feel. I know that watching me over the last 30 years, uh, it, it seems like I, I kind of have my stuff together. Uh, mm-hmm. And what I, I felt the same way. I felt like this is just what I have to do to live my life. What I found is there are there is a, a bucket full of behaviors that defines who I am and how that's different from you. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it's not something that you can experience because you don't have those behaviors. Or if you do, please tell me and let's have a shared experience about it. Right. But, um, you know, if you if you've never experienced that, then we have some learning to do from each other. And that's where we have to start. Right. Um, and, And I think for for me, that's that's how you get through. That's one of those very basic sales techniques that that I learned years ago in my first sales job, and it has actually helped me far beyond, uh, you, you know, any 
sort just of selling success something. in sales. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just right. a way to rationalize, to normalize the space between, you know, two people who are having a difficult conversation. And I think that's really important um, to, but, you know, I want to get back to your, to, to your point. There is a place where you're able to, you have to be able to stop and say, how important is my relationship with this person that they know my position on this? It may be that we only see each other every five years at barbecues and reunions. Right. Right. It may be that this is not something they need to understand about me. It may be something I don't need to defend at this backyard barbecue. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm going to move on from that relationship and, and put that in a different place. Mm -hmm. But there are people who are deeply important to me and may feel strongly in their position and they need to understand who I am. Right. Right. Absolutely. And that's definitely, I think, putting it in, in, in the right context. You know, something you said is normalizing it. And um, that I think is important that people, when they're not feeling supported, look for your tribe. Look yeah. for the people who do get you. And when you need to talk about your ADHD, talk to the ones who do support you, who do understand it. And it may not be the ones that are closest to you. You may need to connect with other ADDers, whether it's in a coaching group or going to a Chad meeting, um, finding an online community on Facebook or Attitude Magazine, listening to podcasts, joining our Patreon community where you can talk about cereal um, along with medication. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot, you know, nothing is more it's always interesting, right? Yes. Um, Truth. And read and educate yourself about ADHD and, you know, learn about how it affects you. Accept that this is, you know, a partner in your life. I love how you said that, that at the beginning of the mm -hmm. show. Um, and, and understand you don't have to defend it. You know, you don't just understand it so that you, um, you feel good in your own skin. Uh, and this is your journey. It's no one else's. And so I think that, you know, the, the, my message, um, that I, that I stand on that I promise I won't change <laughs> is that you're, you're not alone. There are people who really do support you and get this and want to help you and, and be a part of that journey. And, yeah. and, uh, when you're kind of at your low and you, you know, ADHD sucks and this is just an awful thing. Those, those are the people you want to, you want to go to. And, um, you know, help them with the inspiration and motivation to get out of it or to you feel better. The, yeah. Yeah. And you know, the, the, the hardest part I find is I, it's always a, a bit of an awakening when I recognize that there is this person with whom I felt very close, but suddenly realize we have a thing that divides us. And I know so many of us have felt this in our current sort of political era. Right. Yeah, this absolutely. Sort of Anthropocene era that we in which we exist. And, um, you know, ADHD is one of those pivotal topics. Mm -hmm. And it is always so dark when I recognize that here's a person that refuses to have a rational conversation with me about this topic. And now there is something we can't talk about together. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard mm -hmm. for me. To recognize that. And it always does. It takes an enormous amount of work to move to the other side of it. And sometimes it damages the relationship beyond repair. Well, you and I, I think that, you know, when you were talking about the political, I think that it it's so it, I mean, I understand the comparison, but it is different because the ADHD is so personal. It is a part of you. It is a part of the way your brain is wired. It's not your fault that you have ADHD. And then I think that with, you know, when you look at people that that disagree with politics, it's not so it's, I mean, I guess for some people it can be personal. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, but, I, would I mean, be, they get really I'd be hesitant heated. to make that same claim. Yeah. But, yeah. Know? Uh, somehow I, I guess I'm still able for my own depression and anxiety, I can separate my political yes. beliefs. But if somebody doesn't understand that piece of me, that it, 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 it's just more personal. And I think, like you said, it's harder to, to get over to the other side. And it depends if it's that person you, you see every five years versus the person you live yeah. with. Right. Um, yeah, absolutely. This is, this is hard. I think just enable yourself with great resources. There are fantastic resources. As Nikki says, find your tribe, find mm -hmm. the people that, uh, that are important to you. Join the, join the chat. 
over at uh, uh, join our Discord channel and, and find your tribe there. They're definitely there. They are. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and there you go. So uh, again, I put the link to the sh- in the show notes for uh, I Don't Believe in ADHD, the fantastic post by Rick Green over at Totally AD- ADD. Not used to dropping the H. Yeah, right. It <laughs> is foreign to me. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and check it out because it's worth it. It's worth it to arm yourself with these kinds of things. And remember, feel felt found. Feel felt found. Feel felt found. Feel. That's it. Feel what? Feel. Feel. Feel felt found. I feel get how you feel. Felt. I felt that way too. And this what is I what found I found. Is, yeah. Nice. Ah. <laughs> think about that. You learn something new every day. Thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to the show. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD Podcast. Mm-hmm.